Hello, Facebook. Hello, Instagram. Hello, YouTube. What's happening, everybody? Marcus here. Sorry I have a late start today on Monday. Um, I've been a busy, busy morning. I've been down here early working, ordering a lot of things. Um, our order list is growing and growing because of our grocery supplies. We have a rack set up here now. The table is full, filled filled up at night during, uh, for uh, nighttime when we open at 5 o'clock. Um, wines beers, spirits, all kinds of things. So I've been busy replenishing. We had an amazingly busy weekend um, selling all of our grocery items. So I'm trying to keep things in stock and ordering more things. A lot of special orders this week uh, for things like dates, nuts, raisins, um, things like that. So we can get a lot of local things and a lot of organic and natural things. We have, we have all the sourcing and, and suppliers for it. And that's what I've been doing all morning is ordering a bunch of things to replenish for the week here. Our list is growing and growing. You can go to our website and hit the grocery list and see exactly all the things that we're stocking. Um, some of the things are getting a little harder to, um, to order, I noticed. Um, some of the supplies are dwindling on certain things. Other things, the supplies are perfectly fine. So um, hopefully our vendors will update their lists and get more inventory and hopefully have some of these key ingredients that we're using. Um, I did order toilet paper. I was able to get toilet paper, and I got a sustainable brand of toilet paper. A um, a um, one of those ones that has all the certifications. Um, so for the environment, so I was able to get one of those at a decent price, by the way, too. So I'm really excited about that. It'll probably be cheaper than the toilet paper that we're buying without the certifications. Um, I was only able to get a couple cases anyway of, of that other toilet paper. So we have a bunch of stuff coming in today. Tomorrow, Tuesday, our organic order comes in. A lot of farm stuff comes in today. Wednesday, one of the farm hubs comes and more other produce comes. Um, Thursday, fish comes back in. We have a lot of salmon still, or not a lot, but we have a couple cases of frozen wild salmon. We have a little bit of halibut left. We have a little bit of um, sable fish left. Uh, shrimp is almost all gone. That'll be restocked tomorrow. Scallops will be restocked tomorrow. Mahi Mahi, we have less than a half a case. That all comes back in tomorrow. So a lot of our frozen proteins, the seafoods, will be back in tomorrow to Thursday. All that's getting restocked. More and more people are ordering those every week. So I just wanted to, um, to let you know, get your order in as soon as you can. 647-3000 or email us, info at aromatimebistro.com. And there's always free ionized water. We're giving away free ionized water. I, every day that I'm on, I talk about building your immune system, keeping your immune system strong. Um, now is not the time to be eating high sugar foods, fried foods, um, heavy dairy foods. Now is not the time to be eating foods that are not going to honor your immune system. You need to keep your body strong. You need to get sunlight. You need to take your vitamins, all this kind of good stuff. Um, so things that the government aren't, isn't telling you to do, stuff that we know to do, um, stuff like vitamin C. Uh, things like that. So free ionized water, high electron rich, high antioxidant water, al high alkaline micro clustered water um, for free. We have an expensive machine here. We fill up gallons and gallons every day for people. No purchase necessary. Simply come in and bring your containers in and we'll fill it up for you. We're also giving out free gloves, free gloves um, as a community service. Come in, grab a handful of gloves. Again, no purchase necessary for water or gloves. If you want to buy a box of gloves, you can buy a box. We have a little of extra. Um, we have vinyl gloves now as well as latex gloves. So those are available. Jamie, if you're watching, I saw Jamie on before. And good morning, everybody who is watching. I see Mark on. I see Ralph. Um, I see Rick. Hi, Rick. How's it going? Um, a bunch of people are on. I can't check all the comments on my phone like I can on the computer. Uh, but I like using my phone better because then I can pick it up and take it around and give you a tour and show you things. Um, so that's why I like to put my phone on a, on a tripod and be able to walk around with it as opposed to my computer. Um, let's see. A few new items coming in. We brought in American California avocados the other day. Again, I did a, a Facebook Live the other day on avocados. Chilean avocados are the worst because uh, well, avocados are a very water-intense crop to begin with. And so are, by the way, nuts, like almonds. It's insane how much water it takes to, to grow cultivate and bring to market an almond. It's insane. Um, avocados are a very high water consumption crop as well. Uh, they, they deforest, 
in Argentina, and they go in and they they drill down, take the water. Uh, the water doesn't get to the village, villages, and uh, then all of a sudden they have a problem with water and drought and the local farmers there. The avocado groves, when they come in, are typically big companies that come in and deforest and plant tons of avocado trees and um, rob all the water from the locals. So the best avocados to buy are Californians because of this, because of this aspect. Then you'd want to buy Mexican and then you'd really never want to buy Argentinian as, as a whole. Not to say that everything in Argent, uh, uh, um, Argentina is like that. I'm sorry, Chile, Chilean. Not saying everything in, in, in Chile is like that, but mo that as a whole, the industry is like that. Um, more red Russian kale coming in today. Um, we got these boxes of spinach, two pound organic baby spinaches. These are uh, 20 bucks. We got a lot of them in the other day. I only have a couple left. More will be coming into those. Um, good morning, Candace. If you're watching this live, by the way, drop a comment, hashtag live, or if it's on the replay, hashtag replay, uh, just so I know how you're tuning in or where you're tuning in from. Also leave a comment of where you're tuning in from. We did a, I did a Facebook Live yesterday morning about the kitty cat out back. Um, and I think we got a home for the cat already from the first video, which is fantastic. Um, somebody's gonna message us here and they're interested in the cat. It's a white cat that's been in our backyard, not only in our backyard at the restaurant, but it's been around town. We've been feeding it. It was a furrow cat, had a baby last year, uh, another uh, white cat, blue eyes. This one's deaf, by the way. And um, the mom is still here, the white kitten disappeared. We acclimated the white kitten very easily to people because it was a baby kitten and we were able to, to get closer to it and acclimate it. And um, the mom and the baby were running around for a long time and when winter hit, the, the kitten was gone. I'm not sure what happened, it was an adult by then because it was August that, uh, that, the, that, the, that uh, she had this kitten that she was taking around town. Um, we have this mother cat acclimated now to humans. My daughter's done a lot of work with the cat and we've been feeding the cat and the cat will rub up against you now. You can hold the cat. And this cat was extremely skittish, afraid of people. Um, you just looked at the cat and the cat would run away. And now the cat meows. Um, it knows myself and my daughter very well. The cat will run up to us now and it's great. The cat will follow us around the backyard. So the cat is up for adoption. We will get it fixed and all that kind of stuff. So um, we'll take care of all that. Uh, but we do have somebody that is interested in the cat, so we didn't hear back from that person. We had a couple comments on Facebook. Um, let's talk about the foods that have the most sugar. And I got this from a source. There's, I mean, you can Google, do easy, easy Google searches for foods that contain a lot of sugar. Or, or you know, we know the obvious, like candy bars and juice and things like that, are loaded with white sugar. Um, and I did talk about white sugar yesterday. I sent an email out about white sugar. Today's email that's going out now, I think is gonna have the top 30 on it. And I source it from eatthis.com. There's a lot of great sources out there to find. Um, Live Strong is another great source to find to find foods that are loaded in high sugar if you're avoiding high sugar foods. Folks, white sugar destroys your immune system. Now's not the time to be drinking soda, um, eating ice cream. Now's not the time, unfortunately, to be doing a lot of that kind of stuff. You need to keep your immune system strong. You have to stay healthy and drink lots of water. So, I have this list of, of about 30 items here. Let me see where I have it here on my computer. Uh, and some of these things you obviously know, but some of these things you really don't. I'm like, and some of the things like, oh yeah, you know, like pancake mix. If you look at pancake mix, like you go to the store and look at pancake mix, folks, flour, flour, water, eggs, and milk, when you combine all those, does not taste that good. You have to add sugar to it. That's why you have to put butter on it, or a lot of people put butter on it, and that's why a lot of people put syrup on it. But in the mix, there's actually sugar too, and you'd be surprised, because if you just take white flour and, and throw some milk and some eggs in it, it's not gonna taste that good, I promise. Um, it's not that simple. You have to add sugar to it, and a lot of them will do it in the mix, because they're not relying upon you at home to make their pancakes or their, wa your, their waffles and, um, and, and put all you know sugary syrups on it and stuff, so they're gonna do that in the mix. Um, peanut butter is another one. There's all these designer peanut butters out there that um, that are these flavored peanut butters now. Pe peanuts love sugar and peanuts love salt. You add salt and sugar to peanuts and your peanut butter tastes really, really good. Just take a look at peanut butter or nut, nut butters in general will have high sugar contents. This is not on the list that I'm, I'm gonna read off. Uh, but like Nutella, you look at Nutella, 
wow, loaded with sugar, loaded with sugar, milk solids in it. Um, it's pretty crazy. We sell a brand here of a quote unquote Nutella. It's called Nutiva. Nutiva has a dark chocolate, 40% less sugar, um, spread chocolate hazelnut spread, certified organic, by the way. And um, we have it here. I forgot how much it is, like $8. We're sold out until tomorrow. We'll be back in stock tomorrow. Uh, it went like crazy. Um, something, no, I, no, Nutella, people love Nutella worldwide. Nutella is owned by a massive corporation. I was in Piedmont a couple years ago uh, in the harvest time of hazelnuts and the Nutella factory was there, all the hazelnut farms were there. Um, now, Nutella seems to be an Italian product, but Nutella is not supplying the world supply, the world demand of Nutella from Piedmont, from Northern Italy. They produce from all over the world. They have a plant in Canada. Uh, they get hazelnuts from all over. That's just their original location. That's where they were founded. That's where their home base is. But it's like Guinness or something like that. Um, they started in Ireland, but they'll brew anywhere in the world and they'll source from anywhere in the world and they'll make it easier to, to ship and things like that. Gil says he got the Nutiva the other day so good. That Nutiva is amazing. It is really, really good. So that'll get your fix for that. Now, it has 40% less sugar, the, the dark chocolate uh, Nutiva. All right, so let's get to this list of the top 30, the top 30 items that are, um, according to Eat This, that have the most sugar. And I'm just trying to um, I'm trying to pull things up on my computer. I've been like I said, I've been placing a ton of orders today because um, we are just. It is amazing the amount of food we're going through, folks. All of our distributors, all of our salespeople, are like, oh my gosh, Marcus, you guys are like, you used to order once or twice a week from us. Now you're ordering three, four, five, six. To, like one of our distributors is delivering six days, and they're big orders. Uh, our other distributor, three full days, and they're big orders. Uh, our organic order, which we didn't order every single week, uh, United Natural Foods, is coming every week now with a double size order of what we used to order every three weeks. So our numbers have increased drastically. We're selling a lot of food here. Every day we offer our $9.99 special and we offer grocery items. And the grocery items keep growing and growing and growing. A lot of people, a lot of you trust what I say and what I source and what we use here at the restaurant. I was at a restaurant in Reno. Um, See, this was back in like six, seven years ago. I was out there on a conference in our mastermind and we got a tour of one of the most famous farm to table chefs in Reno. And he had a couple different restaurants and he opened up this market where um, you walk upstairs and you can buy all of these organic, natural, local ingredients. And we got a tour of the place. Um, so we were all chefs, we were all restaurant owners, restaurant tours, and we got a tour of the place. So. We go downstairs into the bakery, and I'm looking at all the stuff in the bakery. I'm like, this guy's this guy's a, a con artist. This guy's a scammer. Like, you walk upstairs and you see you see the fresh local eggs from the farm. You see all this local stuff, and you go downstairs into the bake shop. And upstairs, by the way, in the in the regular in the regular um, store restaurant cafe, you'll see all of his fresh baked goods. And they're sitting there next to all these local organic small ingredients. Well, the stuff in the baked goods is not the same stuff that's on the shelves. Like we went down there and there was Quaker oatmeal, there was Domino sugar, there was all kinds of GMO, crap, garbage, commodity food that he was sticking next to all the baked, uh, uh, to all the local farm stuff. And I looked, at, I looked at somebody who's from Reno and I said, this is a scam. She goes, I know it is. This is a total scam, Mark, is what this guy's doing here. Um, but nobody calls him out on it and he's got this great reputation. And I was like, I'm glad I don't make money like that. Folks, what you're buying off these shelves right here is the same ingredients that we use in our food. I'm not buying different ingredients. I'm not cutting corners. Um, if you said to me, hey, Mark, somebody said to me the other day, I, they, somebody literally wanted like 300 pounds of beans from us, 300 pounds. And he's like, I don't want local, I don't want organic. I want the cheapest possible beans you can get me. I'm like, well, let me see if I can help you out and see what I can get you. But that's not the beans. I mean, if you walk in here and buy beans, these are local beans from the Genesee Valley. Um, if you're buying lentils, they're organic lentils. If you're walking in here and getting stuff, this is what you're getting. You're getting the same stuff that we use in our food. I don't have two separate storerooms, unlike this guy in Reno did. I don't even remember the guy's name, but I made a video. I put it on my food fraud uh, channel. Um, um, I think I put, put, posted a, a video on there about how disappointed I was and what I saw firsthand. And this is why we've always, in this restaurant in Aromatime, 
If you wanna know what's in your food, I'll bring you the box. I will come show you the box and say, here's what we buy, because I'm proud of every ingredient we buy. I don't buy Domino sugar. I don't buy cheap oil. I don't buy cheap flour. I don't buy bromated flour. I don't buy that crap, because um, I wanna eat the food that's in my own restaurant. Going through a health crisis when I was 28 years old and being on tons of medications and being overweight and having all these things wrong with me, I reversed all this through my diet. So I built and boosted my immune system. I built my immune system. I used to have pneumonia constantly. I used to have asthma, weakened immune system. I used to have all these things wrong with me and I changed everything in my life and have not pumped an inhaler, an asthma inhaler for over 12, no, 22 years. I've not pumped an asthma in 20 years. 20, 19 years I have not pumped an asthma inhaler. I've had my nebulizer, an expensive nebulizer. I used to have at home so I could breathe because um, I had asthma. I've not used I don't even know where it is. I don't think I have it anymore. I've not touched that in almost 20 years. I got rid of the medications 20 years ago, 19 years ago, because I switched my diet. And the diet, the food that I was eating was the food that I was serving in restaurants. I was working in nice restaurants at the time, five-star restaurants, restaurants that, ooh, ah, you know, you pay all this money for, and it's filled with all this commodity crap. Um, there's certain restaurants, and even a lot of farm-to-table restaurants, buy a few token things, um, but it's not really in-depth, true food across every ingredient. They buy salted salt. They think they're buying sea salt. And they don't do the research. I research everything that comes in here because I want to eat it myself and I know the power of food. So the, the food is very, very, very powerful, folks. It is extremely powerful. And now is the time that you, more than ever with this pandemic going on, that you need to honor your body with healthy, nutritious foods. We have one couple that comes in once or twice, twice a week, and they'll buy, they'll buy these spinaches from us. They'll buy two of them. We'll buy like three of those, four of those, and they're eating them. They're eating these amazing organic greens. We, the kale is flying out of here. A lot of people are coming there and ordering this, this really healthy food, real wild salmon, not salmon that's farmed from organic farms or sustainable farms. Is that's all? That's all scamming. It's all. It's all. It's all a load of, of crap. It's all. Oh, farmed salmon is not something you want to be eating. I don't care what salmon farm it comes from that has an open net pen. Open net pen salmon farms are the worst for the environment, the fish, everything. So everything we bring in here is stuff that I, we personally would eat. All right, now let's get onto this list of the top 30 sugars. So the top 30 foods that are loaded with the most sugar, all right? Now, if you look at, before I go to the top 30, I'm going to jump into the top 30 really quick here uh, in a moment. Before you look into... Um, if you look into cuisines, because this is going to be a blanket, this is going to be like candy bars, vitamin water. It's not going to be like this brand of this. It's going to be general categories. And in these categories, healthier things. So, for example, certain cuisines are very, have loaded with sugar. Certain cuisines are known to be loaded with sugar. The one cuisine is Chinese food. Um, loaded, and I didn't know how much Chinese food was loaded with sugar. I knew Chinese food had, because you go and get these sauces, these sticky sauces, these sweet sauces. Folks, they throw vinegar and they throw sugar in it and they make the vinegar taste good. That's how much sugar goes into, the French call it a gastrique. The Chinese make it taste good and make it sticky and they'll do vinegar and sugar and they'll make it taste amazing. You can make vinegar taste great with enough sugar. And Ming, if you know Ming from Ming Moon here, um, he sold the restaurant five to five years ago. He works for me um, uh, part-time and he worked for me when he sold the restaurant and he did some work for me at one of the camps that we run. And um, I had to make a dish one time and I was shocked up at camp. I was like, that's a lot of sugar. And he goes, well, that's how it tastes good. I'm like, whoa, no, 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 we don't, we're not gonna cook with that much sugar in the future. And li they literally throw cups and cups and cups and cups of sugar in. So Chinese food probably has the worst sugar content. The next cuisine that I was kind of shocked on was Mexican food. And years ago, somebody explained to me, you know, I heard somebody speaking and they explained it, Mexican food has a lot of sugar in it, and if you think about Mexico, they're, they're, they grow sugar, that's what they do. They grow sugar cane, all right? Sugar cane is like their main thing besides tequila. Sugar cane, corn, and, and tequila, um, that's what they're known for. And they make a ton of sugar cane, and just because the sugar cane is in their backyard, it gets into their food a lot. So, but you can go to a Chinese restaurant and order healthy Chinese food. You can go to a, a Mexican restaurant and order healthy Mexican food. You can go to any restaurant and try to order healthier options. You can never leave it up to that specific restaurant to make the best choices for you because, again, they want to make things taste good. And the way you make things taste good is sugar. And this is why a lot of our desserts here are not overloaded sweetness. We use maple syrup. We use palm sugar, coconut sugar. We use brown rice syrup. 
um, we use alternative sweeteners and we still, even though you're using an alternative sweetener doesn't mean you can't abuse it. Um, I like the coconut sugar because it has inulin in it, it has all these magnesium, it has all these vitamins. Even though there's smaller amounts, it still has something in it. But because it's better, it does not give you a right to abuse it or a license to abuse it. It's still sugar, all right? It's still calories, it's still sugar. Um, just metabolizes maybe a little bit differently, certain ones, things like that. So the foods with the most sugar content, here we go, the top 30 according to Eat This. Um, one is frozen meals. So you go to the store, you buy a frozen meal, it's a thing you pop in a microwave, which you shouldn't be using anyway, um, and then you uh, or pop it in the oven and bake it. Um, so these pre-made meals, folks, they want things to taste good. The easiest way to things taste good, the three things, the three things that work in harmony or separately that make things taste good is salt, fat, and sugar. Those three things, you add them to anything and it'll taste good. Folks, you can literally take, make vinegar, white distilled vinegar tastes good by adding enough sugar, all right? And it's done over and over in all types of food. And it's done that, especially in, in, in Asian food. Vinegar and sugar. So frozen meals. Candy bars, of course. All your candy bars across the board, you know that. Vitamin water. Vitamin water. Um, look at the ingredients, folks. Um, Gatorade had corn syrup in it until a few years ago. I think they removed the corn syrup finally because enough people woke up about it. But oddly enough, the Gatorade they ship off to Europe never had Gatorade in it because uh, never had corn syrup in it because that's not what the European Union wants. The European Union wants uh, better quality food. Spaghetti sauce. You look at tomato sauces, and you think you're going to pick up a jar of ragu or this, that. Folks, they make it taste good by sugar. All right, you add sugar to tomatoes and it tastes better. Um, as a young chef, I was always taught, oh, you gotta take the acidic edge off of tomatoes and you add sugar. And one chef was like, no, no, you just add carrots to the tomato sauce and that'll do it, all right? Um, so chefs are notorious for adding sugar to tomato sauce, even in restaurants. They're just, it's a notorious thing. We don't add it, we use beautiful um, Jersey tomatoes, canned Jersey tomatoes um, year round. And we're making, Ming's making in the kitchen right now, making two, two different tomato sauces right now making the jerk for tomorrow night, the jerk uh, uh, sauce for tomorrow night. Cookies, of course. Cookies are obviously loaded. Cereals, cereals. You look at those Fruit Loops, you look at all those things, all those cereals, you look at the back Rice Krispies, loaded with sugar, loaded, loaded, loaded. And of course, they're not gonna tell you on the cover, right? It's not their job to say, hey, we have way too much sugar and this is why we taste good. You have to flip it over because on the front they're gonna put, you know, half the RDA of fiber, half the RDA of vitamin C or 100% of this. You look at the back and that's when you see the true ingredient list. You look at the ingredient list always. You don't look at what the ad is on the box. And when you go to the nutritional breakdown, the RDA, and that helps you a little bit. The recommended daily allowance or the calorie breakdown, that helps you a little bit. But looking at the ingredients and seeing what ingredient is first in there, all right, you'll be shocked. You're buying whole grain bread and the first ingredient is white flour. Then it's corn syrup and then it's whole grains. The whole grains could be the third ingredient in there, but they're calling it whole grain bread. If you pick up another bread, you might see that whole grains are their very first ingredient. So that's how you buy products, folks, as you read the ingredient list. Um, flavored yogurt. Anything that's flavored, vanilla, lemon, <laughs> um, peach, strawberry, blueberry, um, apricot, loaded with sugar, loaded with corn syrup, white sugar, something, it's, it's in there. Um, barbecue sauces, barbecue sauces are sugar sugar by base, that's, that's what they are, they're, they're sugar. Our barbecue sauce here is made from molasses, an organic molasses. But folks, it is a sugar-based sauce. Um, and if you notice on our, on our uh, barbecue on our smoked brisket, you get like one ounce of sauce. We don't overdo it. We don't lather in sauce. It's enough just to just to get onto the meat, and that's it. Just a, just enough. Um, and that's all you need in properly smoked meats. Um, but barbecue sauce. I see some people douse foods, restaurants douse things with barbecue sauce. Folks, barbecue sauce is by nature the base is sugar, some type of sugar. Fruit juices, of course. And where this gets confusing is, um, you can go to the store and buy something that's like pure pure, um, like we sell pomegranate juice, we sell beet juice. By the way, should we keep selling out on this? I have more of this coming tomorrow again. Beet juice, this is 100% pure beet juice in here. Um, we sell pomegranate juice, it's 100% pomegranate juice, not from concentrate. Uh, we sold out, we sold several cases of that last week. Pomegranate juice and beet juice are really healthy for you. Nitric oxide, heart, lung, really good for you. If you're an athlete, beet juice is your energy drink. Beet juice should be your should be your Gatorade. Uh, you mix this with 
coconut water and you have an amazing, amazing um, um, energy drink. So juices, but if you look at like cranberry cocktail and some of these juices, it's water, juice concentrate, sugar, corn syrup, things like that. It's, things are loaded with that. Read your juices very, very, very carefully. You want one ingredient, the juice, that's it. And don't overdo it, it is a processed food, all right? Um, granola, granolas are known to have all kinds of sugar in them. Um, some of the healthier versions will have maple syrup, have alternative sweeteners, um, but when you look, when you go to the store and buy granola, you're looking at, at basically just, just a sugar loaded, sugar loaded oats and nuts and seeds. Flavored coffee, flavored coffee, coffee drinks, Starbucks, Dunkin' Donuts, those are loaded with sugar, loaded, 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 loaded. Um, not on this list is donuts. Well, I'm speaking about coffee and Dunkin' Donuts and Starbucks. Donuts, they're fried, they have the fat, the fat and they're fried, and they have the sugar. All right, those are, those, those donuts are notorious. Um, candy, of course, all types of candy. Um, you know, candy was one of those things that I barely ever, ever, ever let my kids have growing up. You want something, here's an apple. You want something, here's a pear. You want something, here's maybe something that we made ourselves like banana chips, or we dried a fruit um, in the dehydrator. That was their version of candy growing up. And then my son must have been like nine years old and he asked what a Snickers bar was at nine years old. He didn't know that there was a playground in McDonald's until he was like seven or eight. He said, do you know there's a playground in there? And he had never been there, but one of his friends told him there's a playground in McDonald's and he'd never been in there. We never took him in there. You don't, folks, if you don't give your kids this stuff, if you don't give your family this stuff, they don't know about it and they won't eat it. And my kids all know about it now. They don't eat it because they were raised knowing that you got an education and this is why you don't eat this type of stuff. And a lot of people ask my son all the time, including sometimes his trainers, his uh, baseball trainers and stuff of, of certain specific foods that have better nutrition or this or that because they want his advice because they, they see what he eats and what he does and they're interested and they want to know for themselves. Canned soup, soups, sodium in soups as well, but canned soups may have sugar. Read the ingredient list. Soda, of course, canned fruit. Fruit is notorious for this, it's packed in syrup. Even if it says light syrup, light syrup is still sugar. It's still sugar water. Ice cream, folks, you have, ice cream. You could not take milk or cream and throw it in your freezer and put a flavoring in it and scoop it if it didn't have an insane amount of sugar. The sugar doesn't freeze. It makes, this, it ma it makes it to a point where you can put it in the freezer and still scoop it. So when an ice cream scoops nice out of a really cold freezer, the sugar there is adjusted the freezing point and makes the freezing point much lower, which means you have more pliability in that. Um, and there's also a genetically modified ingredient that um, um, Ben and Jerry's parent company uses too. Uh, in uh, It's fish-based to make their ice cream pliable. That's a whole other video and topic. But typically sugar, you have to have enough sugar so you can make it scoopable, all right? Um, oatmeal. You take, when you cook oats at home, imagine cooking oats at home and not adding any sweetener to it. You probably wouldn't eat the oats because you want to add fruit to it, you want to add something to it, you want to add sugar to it, you want to add honey to it, you want to add something to it. Now imagine buying a prepackaged oatmeal where you just open it up and add water and it's flavored and everything. Loaded, loaded with sugar. Else you wouldn't eat it, you wouldn't buy it. The manufacturer's not. Baked beans. Baked beans, imagine how you, you take, Pinto beans normally, or those, those beans typically don't taste that sweet. Beans don't come packed with a sugar content like that, all right? They are cooked with copious amounts of sugar and bacon and mustard and ketchup and spices. Dried fruit. A lot of times dried fruit has, this is number 17, uh, number 20. A lot of times dried fruit has more than one ingredient. You would think, oh, dried fruit, like it's dried fruit. Like it's dried black mission figs. Same ones we use here. You're right. Raisins, just dried raisins. But some of these dried fruits, if you look at it, they have sulfur, preserve the color, and they're pumped with some kind of sugar and glucose. Even sun-dried tomatoes are pumped with glucose, pumped with sugar to make them pliable and plump them up while they're still quote unquote dried, low moisture content. So make sure you're reading your fruits and make sure you understand what's in the dried fruits because people think, oh, I'm gonna pick up a bag of this dried fruit and it's a healthy snack instead of a candy bar and you're still probably have, might be having the same amount of sugar content, uh, refined sugar content that is. Muffins, number 21, muffins. 
all kinds of muffins, McMuffin mixes, muffins that you buy in the store, all that kind of stuff. Trail mix, uh, number 22, which goes along with um, the granola. Trail mix is the same thing. Uh, this is an easy one, frostings. Fro <laughs> Anything that you put onto a cake, onto a donut, a glaze, a frosting, most likely it's all sugar-based. That Almost all the volume of that is probably going to be sugar. All right. If you want to make a, a really healthy icing health or healthy or icing, you would take something like some kind of a liquid, um, agar, um, cocoa powder, a little bit of maple syrup. You cook that, you gel it up and then you puree it. And then from there, it would have this kind of like spreadable thing. You can spread it on, uh, but it still has sugar and it. it still has, you know, syrup or something. Um, but it's at least it's not a hundred percent sugar by volume. So if you want to make a healthier frosting, that's something you can do. And there's other ways you can do that too. You can take, um, um, what are some other ways to make icings? Jamie make, Jamie's the baker in the family. If she's still online watching, maybe she can drop some things that she does for icings. But you can even take like, um, if you do tofu, silken tofu, you can make a silken tofu icing. And there's other things that you can use as well to do icings that aren't 100% 100, 100 sugar by volume based. Um, 24 is pancakes, I talked about pancakes earlier. Um, jelly, jelly is one of those things too. Most of that content is not the fruit. Most of that content is the sugar, all right, in the fruit. So um, maple syrup, um, and it's not really maple syrup here, it's syrup, pancake syrup is what that should be. Um, pancake syrup is, maple syrup is, is sweet sugar as well. Um, people call it more of a, less of an unrefined. If you want the true benefits of, of by the way, of, of, of maple, maple syrup, you want the true benefits of maple syrup, you drink the maple water from the tree. It has a residual sugar of I think one and a half percent, something very, very, very low. Um, loaded with the loaded with minerals because the maple roots go deep. This is what they say the benefits of maple syrup are is all the mineral content in the maple syrup because the roots go deep in a maple tree and it's tapping into the ground and it's grabbing all the minerals out of the ground. It's absorbing in. So maple water is an amazing way to get the benefits of maple syrup without all the sugar. So you drink the maple water when it's in season. It's the first wild harvest food here in the Northeast of the new year. And it comes in about the end of January um, till about now. Um, I'm not sure when maple trees are gonna, uh, they're gonna stop tapping the good crop. Uh, some of the, um, like if you buy like maple syrup, like Aunt Jemima, let's just throw that big brand, like Aunt Jemima. They're using the stuff that they're harvesting late in the season and beyond that typically is not going into a, 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 a good maple syrup quality maple syrup, 100% maple syrup. They're just mixing that in with other things and they're doing the late tappings of the trees and a local farmer would say, you, this stuff is just unedible and you can't sell this. Well, that's where the big companies come in and tap, keep tapping the trees and keep going further than they should be going. Um, pudding mixes, pudding, jello. I know jello has zero calorie. Um, you wanna avoid artificial sweeteners anyway. But um, pudding, uh, any type of pudding, anything, things, these things are loaded with sugar. Uh, all kinds of baked mixes, cake mixes, brownie mixes, uh, muffin mixes, donut mixes, any kind of these mixes. Even check like cornbread mix, all right? Um, you add sugar to cornbread and you're like, oh wow, this tastes really good, right? So sugar's added to all these. Um, frozen pies, of course, any kind of pie, fresh pie, frozen pie, the crust, then the fruit is loaded, and someone will take it and powder with more sugar or glaze it with more sugar. Um, and the one thing here that 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 people don't really think of is salad dressings. So you look at a label on salad dressings, folks. Balsamic vinegar, cheap balsamic vinegar, does not taste good. You put balsamic vinegar with oil, and it's like uh, this has a sharp edge on it, this and that, and you add sugar to it, you add sweeteners to it. You make dressings that are on the sweeter side that goes with bitter greens because people don't really like to eat greens. Now all of a sudden people are eating arugula left and right because they're eating a raspberry vinaigrette on it that, it that has all this sugar in it. The chef took you know a couple pounds of raspberries, a few cups of sugar, some water, made a uh, raspberry puree in there and emulsified it with a little vinegar and oil. And all of a sudden you have a, what you think is a raspberry dressing, healthy raspberry dressing on, on organic arugula um, and some dried fruit on top of it, which has more sugar, and you have a disaster for a lunch. And the only way people really eat these bitter greens or any greens is if you put sugar all over them in the form of a dressing. So salad dressings are notorious. We put zero, zero sugar in all of our dressings that we make. 
We've never put sugar in any, we've never put sugar in any of the salad dressings we made. We just don't do that. It's, it's not, it's not something that, that I've been known for years. You just don't do that. But that's common practice in a lot of restaurants to put sugar in their balsamic. Do you think you're getting, oh, I'm getting balsamic dressing, this fancy balsamic Italian vinegar, you know, this expensive vinegar, which probably isn't. It's probably a very cheap version of balsamic that barely makes the specifications. 90% red wine vinegar. They throw 10% reduced grape juice in it, throw it into a big vat for 60 days, and it gets the stamp of balsamic vinegar. And that's where you can go to Walmart or Sam's Club and buy the jug of five liters for $18. That's what that vinegar is. I've done many videos on the different types and different certifications of balsamics. This is why a bottle of balsamic, a small bottle, will, will cost you $20 and a big jug will cost you $20. Different, different amounts of, of, of commercial red wine vinegar, different aging processes, possibly, um, by law, 60 days minimum, big oak vats. Uh, and oak vats like the size of this room, even taller, the size of my building. I've been in there, I've seen these oak vats. I've seen both types of vinegars in, in the same operation. Um, and then they just take some grape juice, some Labrusco juice, Trebbiano juice, uh, grape juice, and they just reduce it a little bit and then throw it in there and sweeten up the vinegar. Basically, basically most balsamic vinegar, folks, is sweetened up red wine vinegar. You could literally, you could literally take commercial red wine vinegar at home, commercial red wine vinegar, go buy some, some good grape juice, good grape juice, even take a bottle of wine, reduce it by half, Throw in 10%, 90, 90 to 10 ratio of red wine vinegar. So you take a big bottle. This is a, this is like a gallon here. This is um, seventh generation um, soap that we, I had to order. Um, but so I have the empty one here. So I ordered the right thing today online. Um, so this is like a gallon. You can literally take this much reduced grape juice, put it in here, put it in a massive oak vat and call it balsamic vinegar. And it's a day and call it balsamic vinegar. It's a commercially produced product that is very cheap. So this is why when you taste vinegars, balsamic vinegars, you'll find one that, oh, you absolutely love and you'll find one that you absolutely hate. And you're like, well, what's the deal? What's the difference here? Balsamic vinegars is one of those things that varies across the board. And there's two different types, two different certifications, the traditional and the other one. And it's just, it's, it's night and day difference, even in the same certification, based upon how much grape juice goes into the, into the commercial red wine vinegar and how much they reduce that and how long they age it. If they age it for more than 60 days, they put it in smaller barrels, smaller barriques. It's, it's, a, it's an amazing, once you discover balsamic vinegars and the good balsamic vinegars, it's an amazing world. Um, and you'll never wanna buy that $15 jug again of balsamic vinegar. Same thing with olive oils, by the way, too. So. All right, folks, those are the top 30 things that have the highest sugar contents. And according to Eat This, I also added nut butters. So top 31 things that are have the highest sugar contents. Avoid those things. Honor your body. Get some sunlight. Exercise. Take your vitamins. Eat good foods. Eat lots of raw fruits and veggies. Um, make good decisions. Contact an alternative practitioner. Uh, under, talk to a medical doctor that understands solid nutrition, not ADA credentials. ADA, American Dietetic Association, is funded by Coke, Pepsi, the sugar industry, the soft drink industry. All these people have their influence in their hands in there. And this is when they teach dietitians that are in hospitals that corn syrup and a pear metabolize the same, and they don't. Two totally different types of foods, two totally different types of sugars. One's refined, one's not. One has enzymes, one has carbo, uh, uh, the um uh, the fiber in it, two totally different things. But this is the mentality they're taught when they're taught by Coke and Pepsi because it's just the system how it works. All right, folks, thanks for tuning in. Monday night, 999 Wings, 999 Beef Teriyaki tonight. Um, I gotta jump in the kitchen and do a few things. And I gotta go for, I think, for a bike ride here uh, while the weather's still nice. And that's it, folks. Thanks for tuning in. We really appreciate it. And stay tuned for Jamie's drink today. Um, I think she's doing a bourbon sour today. Uh, this afternoon at four o'clock. She could not get on over the weekend because we were jam packed this weekend. Jam packed. Um, while I'm on for the next couple of minutes, does anybody have any questions you wanna ask about anything about fish or sugar or local things? Um, I do have a couple more minutes here before I have to jump into the kitchen. So if anybody has any questions that I can see, um, just drop a question and I'll be happy to answer any comments. Um, I'm going to Facebook here and see if there's any, uh, if I can just grab it on here. And again, I'm happy to um, answer any questions. So, um, Justin's walking in the door here. 
So let me just go into aroma time. Hi, Justin. I'm live on. Let's see here. Give me a moment. Um, William wants to. Do you have any sable fish? I have to double check with Jamie. More sable fish is coming in this Thursday, definitely. Sable fish, we might have a little bit more. Sable fish is also called black cod, folks. Um, and it's also called uh, butterfish. Ming Tsai nicknamed it butterfish in the 90s because this amazing, amazing white fleshed fish. Um, you broil it and it just, it, it just, you eat it and it's like eating butter. It melts like butter. It's called sable fish. It's smoked often. It's from Alaska. It's the same price uh, point as halibut is. So um, if we don't have it, we will be having that coming in very, very soon. William, thanks for asking that. Uh, fish comes in two, three days a week here um, at Aroma Time. High quality, fresh, frozen. If you're buying, folks, the only, the frozen seafood's the way to go. When you're buying the right quality frozen seafood, this is a whole other topic I don't want to get into, but when you buy stuff and you're looking for frozen seafood, you're looking for stuff that is FAS or FOS, frozen at sea or frozen on shore. The stuff that the boats go out for six weeks sometimes or 14 days or long, long journeys. Like, for example, when you buy um, um, Chilean sea bass, they, that boat's out there for months. That stuff is frozen right on the boat. There's never a such thing as fresh Chilean sea bass or non-frozen. It's automatically all frozen on the boat. Um, so Kathleen's saying, I bought the fig balsamic vinegar and find it is too sweet. Do you have any other kind? Um, so um, Kathleen, what you bought from us the, was the Vincoto. The Vincoto has zero vinegar in it. So the difference in the two types of balsamic vinegars, and Vincoto is not balsamic, it's quote unquote a balsamic condiment. It's in the category of the good balsamic vinegars. So the difference in the two types of balsamic vinegars is one is acid based with red commercial red wine vinegar. The good balsamic vinegars where you buy the little bottles and they cost $100, which Kathleen, that's typically what you bought, but a much, much, it's a different region and it's a different age. It's four years as opposed to 20, uh, 12 or 25 years. So Kathleen, what you bought is a very concentrated version of a balsamic type vinegar. So what you bought was reduced grape juice that's then thrown into, imagine taking beet juice and reducing it down and then putting it into oak barrels for four years and have it concentrate and get rich. What you're using there, Kathleen, is something to drop on some, you can drop it on lettuce, um, a few drops here and there. I love to put on tomatoes. I'll slice up tomatoes, cucumbers, um, and I'll just dribble, dri drizzle it around it. That's what we put on our fresh mozzarella. It's great for cheese. You put that with a little blue cheese, it's amazing. Any kind of cheese, brie cheese, um, camembert, things like that, it's really, really amazing. Um, to take that and make like a salad dressing out of it and pour it all over a salad is probably not the best thing because it definitely will be too sweet. So Kathleen, if you wanted to take that, you could simply take that and add a little bit of red wine vinegar to it or other balsamic vinegar to it. But if you added like one part to four parts red wine vinegar to that, you're gonna have closer to a more of a sharper balsamic. That'll just fix that a little bit. But in the meantime, that right there, a couple drops on a lamb chop, um, um, even, on, um, even on certain types of fish uh, 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 is really amazing. So again, that right there comes in a smaller bottle. They're like 30 bucks, 25 bucks. You don't wanna, you don't wanna overuse that. It, it, it's a really strong concentrate. So think of that, Kathleen, as a concentrate and maybe add a little vinegar to it. Maybe that will help. So, um, and do you still have palm sugar? We still have coconut palm sugar. Uh, we still do. I have more coming in. They just shipped out another, I think, 55 pound or 45 pound box or case to us. So that is there. Um, have you tried the aged balsamic vinegars from uh, Scarborough Fair in New Pulse? I have not. Um, I've been meaning to go there. And yes, you can put good balsamics on ice cream. Um, that definitely works. Let me see if I have a couple good balsamics handy. I might, I might not. Um, All right, so um, this right here, this Geminara is really a good, amazing balsamic. You can see the viscosity of it. Um, Mr. Toshi gave this to me as a gift when we were visiting in Modena and Viola, Viola a couple of years ago. 
um, that is really good. Um, I lost the top to this one, but this is the traditional, folks. This is the traditional balsamic that costs $85, $100 a bottle, and they're very, very, very small bottles um, because by law, when you buy the expensive, the good stuff that has no um, vinegar base in it, by law, it's 12 or 25 years old, and it has to be packed in this bottle. No ifs, ands, or buts. Actually, I didn't lose the top. I packed this because I didn't want to spill it and lose the top. So the top is still here. Let me see if I can just snip this off real quick. If you joined us at if you joined us at Rabibaro Winery when I did my wine dinner there, we actually this went on all the dishes. Um, this is like eighty five dollars. This is a twelve year bottle. See the blue logo on there? That's a blue logo. I'm sorry, red logo, red logo. I'm looking at blue, and this is a red logo. See the two certification differences? This is the very traditional 100% um, must, uh, $85 a bottle and up, 12 year old or 25 year old. They're not allowed by law to say it. Um, here is the blue one that has more that's vinegar based. Um, this bottle is expensive, by the way, compared to the jugs. This bottle breaks down how much must is in here and how much vinegar is in here. Um, and this is like a really good version from Toshi. Uh, and again, Mr. Toshi gave this to me uh, when Jamie and I were in Viola uh, a couple years ago. Um, and this is amazing, amazing bottle. Um, has the blue certification on here. Has much less vinegar, a lot more juice, and it's aged for so many years. I and mean, you can see the viscosity of it. So vinegars vary across the board. Let me grab the Vincotto. So Vincotto, Kathleen, that's what you bought, the Vincotto. So this is infused with figs, and this is local grapes down south, I think Primitivo or some grapes. This is from, this is right from a near, near a city in Apulia called Lecce. Lecce is Italy's southern Florence. It is an amazing, beautiful city. Jamie and I were there in November. We never got to visit them here, but we, I've had email contact, I've contacted them. We're gonna get here and take our group there. Hopefully we'll be able to go in November. Still, if not, that trip will get delayed, so we'll see what happens. Um, but this is grape juice, reduced, and then infused with figs and aged for four years in oak barrels. This, folks, is along the lines of what this is, but this is a much um, babier version, so four years compared to 12 years or 25 years. So, um, and this is from the South. The economy is different in the South, so you can get a really good deal of a lot of wines and stuff in the South, um, and vacations and stuff. Everything in the South is really a good deal, and it's amazing. So this is uh, Vincotto. So this, Kathleen, this is what you bought. So, all right, all right, folks. I got to rock and roll. Got to get out. I'm gonna ask Justin if he wants to go on a bike ride with me. I don't see any more questions for now. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. I appreciate it. And until next time.